Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC and to a second part of my initial overview of the new C Uni RC7 Pro HD radio system. If you haven't seen the first part, go check it out now. I have left a link to it in the description below as well as other relevant links. Now let's dive into it. Previously on Axangel RC. Alright, finally let's go and power this puppy up. That is done just like the MK series and the DJI remotes. Press once and immediately press a second time and hold until the bars at the top fill out and you hear the sound then release. After a short wait for everything to load up you will be greeted by a message that there is no SIM card in it. Tap on the side and you will be greeted by this 1600 nit bright and beautiful screen which C claims is full HD. HD, well it certainly looks the part and the screen recordings seem to support that claim. Don't forget to power the air unit side as well. First time around you will need to bind the two. Go into the menu, go to the second tab down, scroll to the bottom and press the bind button. Then go to the air unit, press its button for two seconds until the red LED starts blinking fast and then just wait for them to link up. Next time you restart the system it will take a few seconds for it to establish the link between the modules and I can tell you that it takes noticeably less time than the HM30 system which is pretty nice. I'm seeing the system improvements already. Once the system is linked the leftmost LED at the top on the radio will turn green. The nice thing is that it will connect while the system is powering up so by the time everything loads up the link will be established and you will be ready to go. As you can see there is nothing on the home screen but the Uni GCS app. If you pull the drop down from the top you will notice a few things which weren't present in the MK series. There is a screen cast option so if you connect it to a Wi-Fi that has some kind of a cast device on it or a smart TV you will be able to cast the radio screen to it. I have not tested it yet but in theory it should work like so. Also you have a built-in screen capture feature so you don't have to install a third party app for that and it works pretty decent. Most of the screen capture for this video was done this way. Also since I usually create a hotspot from my phone for my laptop the radio already connected to it which would be useful when they get the map part in the Uni GCS app working properly so it can be loaded on the fly. So now screen capture working at all, it is time to start the Uni GCS app. I tap it and a few seconds later I can already see the video from the R1M camera. So this again is working much quicker than the CFPV app to both open the app and load the video feed. Sadly since I have mounted the R1M camera upside down on the plane for convenience the image is showing upside down here. However, and here is the sad part, this app does not yet have an option to flip the image. Yeah. I was shocked because this feels like an important option to have from the get-go. The CFPV app had that from the start or at least from my start with it. Clicking on the three line button with the arrow will show camera specific options where you can select gimbal operating mode for a gimbal or stream resolution and whatever else is applicable. Just below that would be the video record and photo buttons if I had an SD card in this one. But I don't so it is showing me that an SD card is missing. Also you might notice that the app is currently not showing any telemetry information from the drone. Turns out that while having the telemetry cable from the autopilot plugged into the UART1 port it wouldn't work. The moment I plugged it into the UART2 port on the air module telemetry showed up on the app. I just wanted to get this out of the way now even though I figured it out a lot later while dealing with the system. Clicking on the three dots in the top right would open the settings menu and the first tab in there shows the cameras. This app, unlike the CFPV one, gives you an image of the camera and gives you all the useful information on the screen including all of the gimbal's firmware versions down below once you have the gimbal selected and connected. And since I have the R1M camera connected to the LAN1 port on the air unit, by default it is showing that one as camera A. But remember, I also have the the ZR10 gimbal connected to the LAN2 port so we need to get that going as well. However since by default all cameras and gimbals come with the same IP address 
if I just select the ZR10 gimbal from the drop down menu for camera B, the app will tell me that there is an IP address conflict because this preset expects it at the default address, but I have changed that, so we'll need to add it manually just like in the CFPV app, so nothing new here, unless you consider the fact that you can't flip the image, a novelty for some reason. In order to enter a custom address, you tap the pencil button and then just type whatever you need to type. The default address ends in 25, which is what the R1M is using, so I changed the ZR10 to 26, so the address now is 192.168.144.26, and everything that follows. Click OK, and within a second or two, you should see the gimbal's feed show up at the bottom right corner of the screen. That is, in the case where you have two cameras or gimbals and you want to see both feeds at the same time. But why would it look like that, you would wonder? Well, I did wonder that as well, at first, but then it dawned on me that I need to set up the channels properly. Right now the gimbal was receiving all kinds of commands from all sorts of switches which were assigned in the factory at random, so I needed to set them according to my system and to how I've programmed the gimbal and the autopilot. In order to do that, you need to tap on the radio icon in the middle and then the channels sub-tap. Now keep in mind this radio has 23 buttons but can only output 16 channels, so you will not be able to assign all of them buttons. Some will be left out. It's sad, but that's life. Stop crying and get over it. Clicking the three dots on the right will allow you to set the endpoints for each channel and clicking right to the left of that will allow you to select a button for this channel. Some of the physical buttons are not labeled, but with a bit of play you will figure them out. So check this out, the moment I set the SA button for the gimbal's modes, that will be the three position switch at the top left of the radio, the gimbal reacted when I flipped it around. It's nice when things work. Just take your time and set up the buttons according to your needs. The only channel that you cannot reassign from here is channel 5, which is assigned to the M1, M2 and M3 buttons, which are made to work as one three position switch for flight modes. You cannot change the assignment of these three buttons, they go together as the flight button and can be reassigned from the system sub tab where it says flight and from there you can assign that button set to any channel. But I will leave it as it is right now because I have set my flight modes to the SB switch, top right three position switch. This is where I usually have it on my Tyrannis radio and I'm just used to that. But if you will be flying in cold environments and will be wearing gloves, you will be better off using that button set for the flight modes, would make it a lot more comfortable to operate. The other thing I did was to use my label maker to make labels for all the buttons and switches and dials I will be using. The only thing left would be to assign in the gimbal settings, which I need to do on my computer, to have its yo commanded by the side movement of the small joystick under the throttle. I did already assign assign the gimbal's pitch to it, but it feels too sensitive, and I feel like it won't be okay for precise work with a zoomed in gimbal. Might be convenient for a more zoomed out reframing of what the gimbal is seeing, but for the precise work you would need to use the touchscreen. And speaking of the touchscreen, the gimbal controls are as follows. Double tap to focus in that point. Touch and hold for at least one second to be able to move the gimbal around. If you touch and move your finger immediately, the gimbal will not react. You need to touch and hold for at least one second before you move your finger for the gimbal's control to engage. Centering the gimbal no longer seems to work by double tapping the screen in the center since that is now the focus, so you need to use the gimbal controls in the top left corner. The top option would center the pitch and yaw. Just under those controls is the Mavlink Fusion icon showing you that the gimbal is receiving valid Mavlink data for its stabilization needs. On the right you can see the on-screen controls just like in the CFPV app. You have photo and video buttons, zoom and manual focus buttons as well and on top you have gimbal specific options like stream resolution, gimbal mode selection and so on. And now let's dive into the apps menu. In the radio tab the first item is stick mode and that basically allows you to select the stick configuration which best suits you. I have no idea why they aren't labeled mode 1, mode 2 etc but below the selections you can see a diagram explaining what the sticks do in each mode. Since I'm a mode 2 user that seems to be the American mode so I'm going with that. 
Next one is the sticks and dial calibration menu. O seems to be measuring pretty accurately till the physical endpoints of the sticks and the dials, so I'm not going to be doing that calibration at this time. Then we have the data link tab. Here you can choose the settings for the Mavlink data output from the radio, and there are multiple options available, by default first one is Bluetooth and second UART with the baud rates, about what would be the default for most RG Pilot based ground gear. But I will let you in on a secret, which you lot will be able to see in part 3 of this series. But seriously, if it has been useful so far for you, like, share, subscribe and notify. A big thank you to everyone supporting this channel and I will see you again in part 3.